Hello, welcome to another AARP New Jersey Fraud Friday Facebook Live. I'm Christine Bruccino, an AARP New Jersey volunteer, and today we will continue our important conversations on fraud and scams happening right here in our state. Criminal scammers use a wide range of scams, and today we're going to talk about a growing tactic that scammers are using, convincing people to purchase gift cards and share the information off the back of the card. To talk about this growing tactic, I'd like to welcome and introduce our guest today, Karen Price Mueller. Karen is a writer for the Star Ledger and NewJersey.com, specializing in personal finance and consumer issues. She is also founder of NewJerseyMoneyHelp.com, an independent personal finance website that gives readers objective and free money advice. This is an interactive conversation. So if you have a question about gift card scams for our guest, please type it into the comment section and we will do our best to get to it live. Looking forward to a great conversation. Hi, Karen, how are you? I'm great, how are you doing today? Good. Karen, the, first tra the Federal Trade Commission reports that gift cards have been the most common form of payment in scams since 2018. Why are gift cards scams so popular with scammers? It's really easy for them to get the money. You know, if, if they're trying to get you to wire money or bring them cash or mail them cash, that can be a little bit more challenging. But with gift cards, you know, first of all, gift cards are so easy to find. You can basically go into any store and buy them. The scammers know this. They'll actually call and keep you on the phone and walk with you into the store on the phone to make sure that you make the purchases. Wow. And then they can just turn around and sell the cards at a discount or on some sort of a resale or an auction site to get the money. And it's almost impossible to trace. Wow. That, that's crazy. How do gift card scams typically typically work? So gift card scams are a version of these imposter scams that we've talked about so much. You might get a phone call, could be an email or a text, but typically a phone call. And somebody is saying that they're from the IRS and you owe back taxes or that there's a problem with your social security number and it's been linked to a crime or even saying that they're your utility company and you've got overdue bills that you're going to need to pay immediately. Sometimes they'll even you know, say that they're from the FBI or law enforcement and that there's a warrant out for your arrest and you're going to have to, you know, pay money to make this go away. Another popular imposter scam would be the grandma scam. That's or that's what I call it. When they typically try to call older people and suggest that their grandchildren are in trouble, either the grandchild has been arrested or the grandchild has um, ended up in the hospital and they need to pay money either to get out of jail or to pay a hospital bill. Um, and they'll tell you to buy gift cards to do that. And you know the other one that you see a lot is they'll tell you that you want a lottery and you need to pay taxes mm -hmm. on the money before you, you can actually get the funds. But really what they all have in common is that there's this immediacy, urgency, they scare you, they make you... Um, you know, sort of act in a way that you might not otherwise act because they just have a great way of instilling fear that, you know, these scammers are really professionals. It's, it's, um, they can trick just about anybody. Wow. I, I, I like to share a story, personal story that happened to me almost, and I say almost because, um, I didn't fall for the scam, fortunately. Um, and it, just two weeks ago, a close, very longtime friend of mine, his email was hacked. Mm -hmm. And a scammer used his email and pretended to be my friend. And it was very real, except that I knew how my friend talks and speaks. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't familiar. But um, yeah, and with these, they, they might say, oh, I'm, I'm trapped in a foreign country and lost my passport. <laughs> and I need money for whatever reason. And um, yeah, that's, that's also another common one. Yeah, and the email was, I'm interested in buying a Google Play gift card for my nephew. So once I heard this or that, I was like, uh-oh, no, <laughs> delete. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, what's interesting is with these scams, they, they are often hoping that the person who they're trying to scam will be really unfamiliar with the kinds of gift cards that right. they're telling you to buy. They, <laughs> they will tell you to buy common stores like, you know, say Best Buy or Target, but they'll also use things... Um, with you know some of the technology related gift cards that older mm -hmm. folks might not be so familiar with, and then they'll say, "Hey, you know these are actually um, electronic vouchers for the government, or using mm -hmm. some sort of more formal thing to 
try to trick you into thinking that the gift cards are something different that you'd be buying. Yeah. Uh, actually, we received a comment from uh, one of our viewers, Kathleen. She said this same, this has happened to her. She didn't send the cards, um, but she had, she isn't, she hasn't been able to use the gift card. So, uh, hmm, well, this I, is actually the key. She, she yeah. said that she didn't send the cards, but did she scratch off? Did you scratch off the back of the card and give those numbers to the scammer? Because that's how it works. They don't usually have you send the cards to mm -hmm. them. They instead right. tell you to scratch off the back and read to them the numbers. And then the scammers could take those numbers and right. you know, basically sell the value of that card. So right. that could be why she's unable to use it. Okay. So being asked to buy a gift card should raise a red flag for, uh, for a person. Yeah. It should, but you know, like I said before, they really play on people's emotions and they make it really um, like it's a desperate, you must do this right now. And, and literally they will say, hey, I'll stay on the phone with you when you go to CVS mm -hmm. or to wherever to buy these gift cards. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, they, they will pick up on cues that you might give them that makes you think that they know more about you than they actually do based mm -hmm. on how you respond. You know, for example, in, with the grandma scam, if they say, you know, your grandchild, something happened, you say, was it Mary or was it Jim? And then they'll say, no, it was Jim. So they'll know to play on that. So, but really anytime anyone tells you to buy a gift card, mm -hmm. just don't do it. It will always be a scam. Okay. Do scammers typically ask for a certain type of gift card from a certain store or? Yeah, they, they will usually ask for something specific, although it could really be like a wide range of different kinds of cards. It could mm -hmm. be Google Play, like you mentioned, it could be um, iTunes or Amazon. The iTunes gift cards were very popular for the IRS um, back taxes scams. So, but really, it could be any kind of any kind of card that they ask for. Okay. Now, through all through your experience, your writing, reporting, do you have any examples of gift card scams um, you can share with us? You know, one that I wrote about recently, and I think it's most interesting because it didn't happen to an older person. It happened to a younger person. And it, um, I'm sorry, I'm just having a little technical issue here. It, um, it happened to a woman who was, I think, only 27 years old. And she was told that there was a problem with her social security number. And she ended up going and buying $3,000 worth of gift cards sent and gave the numbers to the scammer and she lost the money. Um, but really, all of these stories, they're, they're terrible, but, but they all, even though the scammers use different techniques, they're, they're all the same in the end. Okay. Are, are stores doing or making effort to help identify these potential scams? Like if some, that young person went in and bought $3,000 worth of gift cards, you know, red flags for the store, maybe. You know, it, it really should be, but it's not always. Some stores have actually trained their clerks to be mm -hmm. alert and say, you know, if, if somebody comes in getting a large number of cards or a large dollar figure, that they should talk to them about it and say, hey, I just wanted to check because I know there are a lot of scams going on to see if the person will um, will listen and, and get it, it, you know, if it is a scam. But there are plenty of others that they just don't say anything. The, the, mm -hmm. What happened to that woman that I spoke about a few minutes ago? She was in a large home improvement store when she purchased those gift cards. Right. And um, the clerk said nothing to her, no warnings at all. Wow. When these ha think types of things <laughs> happen, where should consumers go to report a gift card scam? You should always report it to the Federal Trade Commission. Um, and they will um, basically compile all these reports that come in um, to see if they can find any kind of trends. Uh, Chances are, though, even if you do report it to your local law enforcement, you're probably not going to get your money back if the money's already been taken. Mm -hmm. You can also try to contact the merchant um, that uh, gives the gift card out, you know, whether it's a Best Buy gift card called Best Buy and so on, just to see if there is actually money left back on the card. But usually there won't be. Wow. OK, well, I'm just going to see if there's any questions or comments from our audience. Um, OK. Current, um, I think as we are wrapping up our conversation, do you have any additional thoughts that you'd like to share stories? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think that one of what, you know, we, we see studies all the time that 
that gift card scams are continuing to grow and be really popular. But I think that they're actually um, more common than we even know because people get embarrassed when mm -hmm. it happens to them. They don't want to think that they ever could have fallen for a scam. But it is really important to report it. Speak to your family about it. Speak to your friends mm -hmm. about it. Again, that young woman I spoke about, after it happened to her, she spoke to her family. And it turned out three other relatives were um, approached by scammers, two of them actually fell for the scam, but they never said anything. And had they spoken about it, she might have been able to recognize when it happened to her that it was actually a scam and not uh, not a real trouble that she was in. So I think it's really important to talk to people about it. Great, that's great information to, sh to share. Uh, are there, a, 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 in addition to the gift card scams, are there trends or new scams that you're seeing from your reporting? Um, Sure. I mean, right now, especially with um, COVID, and this has been going on since the start of the pandemic, you see a lot of scams that are related to either stimulus payments, um, mm -hmm. really, especially the stimulus payments, but also now that we're having some changing tax credits that are very advantageous for, for taxpayers, um, scammers will always take something in the news and find a way to try to take your money away. Um, you know, just always know about the stimulus payments. You don't have to pay anything to get one. Um, nobody's going to call you on the phone to discuss it. No one's going to ask you for your social security number. It's all based on the tax returns that you file or the information that the IRS already has on file about you. Um, so now is the time to really look out for those. Very good. Well, thank you, Karen, for so much today for today's convers informative conversation. We are. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. And just everybody remember, if ever somebody asks you for a gift card, just hang up. Don't be afraid of being rude. Just hang up the phone. Or delete that email. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. Uh, we're very glad to have you to have you with us to, to share tips and best practices and resources so we can protect ourselves and our loved ones from fraud and scams. For our viewers, if you're concerned you've been scammed, you can reach a trained volunteer at the AARP Fraud Watch Network helpline at 877-908. 3360. Again, that's 877 908 3360. If you'd like more information and resources on frauds and scams from AARP New Jersey, please visit aarp.org slash NJ fights fraud. Again, that's aarp.org slash NJ fights fraud. And if you like more information on gift card scams, please visit aarp.org slash gift cards. We hope today was helpful about how you can stay safe from gift card scams. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much for having me. Take care, everyone.